Today, I'm gonna to go over my 2020 winter running essentials. Seven point five six miles, eight minutes, forty four seconds from about one hundred and forty five beats per minute on average today. Going for a little bit of a workout, two times five minutes at just below threshold pace. That's something that I want to be working on for the next couple of weeks. I don't have a race or anything coming up, but something I generally just want to do is work on getting some more just time at that threshold level of running. And today was a fun day to do it. Oh, it was really cold. Temperatures were in the mid 20s with a little bit of wind, although I didn't really notice it too much to be honest with you. So a nice crisp day to be running and a great time to talk to you guys about my winter running essentials. Now, in essence, the winter running essentials aren't gonna really be all that different from my last year's winter running essentials videos or the winter running essentials video the year before that either. But one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I was able to do for you guys is to provide examples of things that I liked and things that I didn't like that I've recently tested that you could still go out there and kind of go buy. So you don't have to go out and buy all of this stuff but depending on like what the winter's like for you and how many times you're gonna be running outside uh, during the winter, these are just a different sampling of things that you might wanna take a look at as you're starting to think about, all right, how am I gonna run the next couple of months? Uh, Cause where you are, gyms might still be closed. You might still not have access to a treadmill and you might be facing the prospect of going outside to run for the first time. Hopefully some of these things give you some ideas on how you can use a lot of the stuff that maybe you already have in layers or what are some other like key essential pieces that you might be able to pick up. So with that in mind, let's go over some of like the more basic stuff, the stuff that I don't think really changes too much, but also the stuff that I think is like the key that could like make or break your winter running, the stuff that I just wouldn't run without. So the first thing I'm talk about is the cheapest thing on this list and that's hand warmers. And uh, before I get into any more of that though, I do wanna re remember to talk about some disclosures. Some of this stuff was provided me for the purpose of review. Some of it wasn't uh, and was purchased with my own money, but in either event, no one's paying me to make this video or to include their product uh, in this video. And no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the hand warmers. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you which ones specifically were or weren't provided because there's a big list of stuff here. I'll put links to everything down in the description below and I'll put an asterisk by anything that was provided for the purpose of review. So first we'll talk about the hand warmers. These are disposable hand warmers. Uh, they're pretty cheap, pretty economical to run with them every day. And basically once we really get into winter, I'm running with a different pair of these every single day. So I go through them pretty quickly. You tear them open once they're exposed to air, they start to warm up. They're nice and small. I can fit them inside my gloves or my mittens and they're definitely gonna stay warm the entire time. My biggest problem with them though is there, it's like a lot of waste. There's the plastic packaging, there's the hand warmers themselves. That's all like stuff you throw away every day. I've tried some reusable ones. They just don't cut it. They're just not the same. And so I'm still going with these disposable ones. If I didn't have hand warmers, I don't think that I could run through most of the winter here in the Northern Midwest. So they're definitely a game changer for me. And I pair those with my favorite mittens. These are mittens from Kraft. Kraft does a lot of great stuff with not only running, but cycling and uh, cross country skiing, all stuff that requires either exposure to a lot of wind or wind and cold temperatures. So I feel like if a company can make stuff that handles those kinds of activities, they can make a pretty good running mitten. And these are my favorite. I generally buy like a pair of these a year, which doesn't seem like a terribly long time for these to last, but there's a lot of padding that's up here. And I feel like after the year mark for me, running in these every single day in the winter, uh, it just feels like the padding just kind of like wears down and isn't as like warm. So like uh, they might last like a year, a year, maybe like two years, uh, but this is my second pair of these that I've had. And uh, I can definitely tell the difference with like a fresher pair 
than a pair that I've had for a couple of years. So um, for me, because my hands are something that always get very cold, uh, having them to be as warm as possible is something that's really important to me. I love running mittens. The mittens help keep your hand warmer. Gloves, there's more surface area for the cold air to get through. The hand warmer plus a glove or a mitten, something that's really insulated, that's gonna be the one to punch for me to be able to get through a lot of the winter. But it's not just the gloves and mittens alone. I also wanna make sure my head is covered as well. And here I'm not as picky. Um, so like when races give away winter hats, I love it, especially the ones with the little palms on the top. I don't know why, but I do appreciate them. So like these kinds of hats work just fine. Um, I got this one on Amazon last year. It came in a two pack. It's just like a regular, just kind of winter knit hat. Um, two of them for 20 bucks. There's a gray one and a darker one. The gray one I don't like as much the color, but this one works fine. There's a little patch on, on the side of it. You can easily cut that off if you didn't want it there. But this one uh, works has been working really well for me. I've probably put in over 100, 200 miles just in this hat alone. So it's definitely been able to withstand the winter temperatures and it certainly keeps my head warm enough. Once we get to like super cold temperatures, then I might be thinking about like balaclavas, things like that. But for the most part in the winter, just any kind of like winter knit hat, I'm pretty good with, even if it's like a speed workout, it's cold out. I just like being warm on my head and on my hands. And so like, I just like to have that thick winter hat up top. But there are times when, again, the wind is gonna get you or the cold temperature's gonna get you, so you wanna keep your face covered as well. So I wear a lot of buffs. I've been running in buffs for years. It's not something that was invented because of the coronavirus. It's a product category that's existed a long time. It's to the point that buff is such a popular brand in the field that they would prefer it uh, as a company that if you would call their things that they make, neck gaiters, uh, instead of calling them buffs, because then they don't want their brand name to become generic so that they don't lose their trademark protection. It's a thing that's been around for a really long time. And of the neck gaiters, I really like buff ones. They work out really well. If you're looking for buffs, the other thing that I would suggest is look for all of your favorite running YouTube creators. They probably have a neck gaiter that they've made of their own. So you can find a way to not only keep your face warm in the winter, but also support your favorite YouTuber. So that's something that I would also recommend that you look for. All right, so the next thing let's talk about, let's clear some space here, is gonna be socks. Now, when it comes to the winter time, I'm not so picky about like the materials necessarily. Uh, I know a lot of people swear by merino wool and they have all their favorites of stuff, but I just like my socks to be thicker because it's cold and I wanna keep my feet really warm. And so for the winter time, I switch from like the no-show socks that I love in the summer and I go to basically three kinds. There's the quarter sock. This is one from Darn Tough. I like Darn Tough socks because they are made in the US. They have a lifetime guarantee uh, and they're just darn tough socks. I really like this one. I've been wearing this one in the summer as well, but it's good. This one is also good in the winter. Some of my running pants don't go quite as long as I would like them. And so having at least the quarter top helps a little bit in keeping the skin covered. So this one is one that I really enjoy of this quarter length. Then you move up to a little bit taller. Then you've got this pair of socks, which are the crew length sock. They come up a little bit higher um, on the ankle. This is from Stance. Stance is a brand of socks that I've actually been really enjoying the past several months. Uh, this one has merino wool in it, which is supposed to keep you warmer while being lightweight and not getting too sweaty. They're very comfortable. I like the way that they hug the foot uh, and the extra length is, is pretty nice as well. Then from there, after the crew length, then you get to like full, like over the calf. These will come up basically to the knee. This is one that's by East Bay, uh, you know, the catalog company. And uh, I don't think that they're running specific at all. They're not the most moisture wicking of material that I've had, but when it comes to my feet in the winter, I'm not really worried too much about sweat. I'm worried about cold. And these coming up all the way up the calf, I really like. Darn Tough also makes a really good over the calf sock as well. And again, made in the USA for Darn Tough. Um, and they have that lifetime guarantee. So I really enjoy those socks as well. I left my pair of Darn Tough over the, the calf socks in Chicago and I'm really regretting that because those are some of my favorite socks. So that's kind of like the extremities. Those are some of like the cheaper stuff that's gonna be on this list, but also I think some of the most important stuff. But now let's start talking about tops and then pants. So for tops, 
I kind of have a dual approach to it. There's under layers, base layers, and then there's top layers. So one of the base layers I've been liking lately is this uh, mock neck shirt long sleeve from Janji. And uh, this one I really like because it has merino wool. It gives it a little bit of softness to it, a little bit of extra warmth. And also the merino wool is supposed to be moisture wicking as well. The rest of it is polyester and spandex. So it's still nice and stretchy, but it has enough of something else in it. So it doesn't have that kind of like shiny slick feel to it, which I feel like in the winter time of like a traditional, just like tech tee or tech long sleeve can get a little bit chilly uh, in terms of being like on the skin. And so like, I like it when it's not like 90% polyester. I like it when there's something else that kind of cuts that polyester amount down a little bit. And having this 11% merino wool gives it a really pleasant softness. Plus with this mock neck, I feel like it helps trap a lot of like the warmer air in, in a good way. So that way when I'm cold, I feel like there's still a lot of warmth that's staying in the shirt uh, and not getting like lost to the elements. So I've been really enjoying this one, not only as a base layer, but I've also worn it as an outer layer or just to wear around the house as well. Very comfortable. The next one I'll talk about is a half zip that uh, is from Corsa. I really like. It's got these like little nubs that are reflective. So um, that's a pretty cool design element that I enjoy here. Plus, it's a little bit thicker of a quarter zip, still pretty stretchy. Uh, so very comfortable to wear, or very warm to wear as well. A lot of the Corsa brand stuff, Corsa is a company that's owned. I don't know if in part or wholly by Roadrunner Sports, um, but that sub brand of theirs, Corsa, all the stuff seems to be a little bit on the warm side for me. So in the summertime, I don't like it as much, but in the wintertime and in the fall, that's where stuff like this comes in real handy. I've been enjoying this uh, on very cold days by putting like a longer layer, like this base layer underneath it. Um, and if it's warmer or not super, super cold out, I could just put like either a, just a cotton t-shirt or a tech tee underneath it and then layer this on top. So that's been really nice for me. The next top that I'll talk to you guys about is this one from Baleaf. I think that's how you say it, B-A-L-E-A-F. If you've spent any amount of time on Amazon, you are familiar with this brand. What I like about it is it's got this hood that's really like tight fitting. I think they call them scuba hoods. Other normal hoods kind of like just catch wind for me. These don't, so I like that. And there's thumb holes in this one as well. It is a really nice top to wear because it's very thick, so it's warmer, but that does also make it a little bit stiff. So just be aware of that. It's not gonna be a huge deal, but it's not like the most comfortably soft top that I've ever worn, but very functional for a winter running. Um, the next jacket that I'll talk about, oh, I forgot about this one, is one that I actually don't think works. It's a jacket made by Rabbit. It's got a Rabbit logo on the back right shoulder. Um, it's made out of like a water resistant material. It's very lightweight, a couple of zip pockets on the side and one of those like scuba hoods, those tight fitting hoods. I wore it in a rainy conditions uh, when it was like 40 something degrees out. I think anything much colder than that and this jacket would have just been not that helpful to me. Uh, the two things that I don't like about it is that from the way it looked on the website, I thought it would be something that I could wear deep into the winter. I don't really think it is. And the other thing that I thought from it is that I thought this would just be this like gray, like silvery, almost white, off-white color. Um, but it's kind of translucent. It's kind of see-through and I really didn't want that. And so just some things to be aware of that might be cool for you and that might be something that you like. Um, it wasn't something that I liked. So I'm not a huge fan of the design of the jacket in terms of like the see-throughness of it uh, and how thin it is. I was thinking that it might be a little bit warmer, um, but depending on what your winter's like, this might be the exact layer that you've been looking for. So uh, that's why I'm including it in today's uh, winter running essentials because it just kind of gives you some options in case this is something, a jacket that you've seen online that you might have been interested in. The other thing I do like about it is that it's made from used coffee grounds. So I do like the innovation there that they're taking something that would otherwise be waste and turning it into something awesome like a running jacket. So there's that one. Next, I'm going to talk about probably my favorite running jacket that I have, and that's this one from Kraft. It's got kind of like a mock neck to it. Um, and it's got this like fleece like material stretchy for the sleeves. My arms like from like my shoulder down to like my wrist don't usually get that cold. So having just like something really stretchy is fine here. 
but on the shoulders and the top, like when the wind's really blowing, that's when I want some like wind protection. And then when it's super cold, my belly gets kind of like really, really cold. And so having like extra layer of like very insulated type of material really works out well for me here. I'm not sure how much of this jacket is left available on the craft website. So if you're interested in it, go hurry up and get it. But I do want to mention it because it is one that you'll be seeing in a lot of videos over the winter time and I absolutely love it. So if you have any questions about it, that's what this is. I'll put a link down to it down below. Now, here's another new jacket that I picked up for this year. Uh, again, just from doing a lot of searching on Amazon. It's a company that's, uh, the logo is DK, which I presume stands for Drift King, but the company is Little Donkey Andy. Just doesn't really make much sense at all, but they make these nice looking jackets that are just super cheap. I think this one was like 42 bucks or something like that. It's got a very thick fleece type of material for the sleeves and on the back of the jacket, there is a little bit of logo back here on uh, the collar. Um, and it's got that fleece material all in the back. And then up front, it's got kind of like bubbly material, insulated material on the front uh, to help keep some of that wind out and just to help keep you a little bit warmer. And then on the inside of the jacket, it's just fleece. So a super warm material to wear. Uh, I wore it to warm up for my 10K time trial last weekend and for like a really cold day, like we had there again, like temperatures in the mid twenties. Uh, and we actually had a lot of wind on that day too. Uh, that jacket for the warm up was fantastic. If I was wearing it for a long run, I think it would be really good at keeping me warm. The two things that I'll note about it is that the sizing seems a little bit big. I got a medium, but it feels like I'm wearing a large, so I probably could size down a little bit on it. Uh, and the other thing is there isn't a cinch spot uh, on the jacket, so there's no way to like make it tighter on the bottom. So it's very loose fitting on the bottom and uh, it made it feel like I was losing a lot of like heat through there. Maybe that's a good thing in the overall scheme of things, but when I'm putting a jacket that's this thick on to go run, it's gonna be really cold out. So I would prefer if there's some way of making it either, if it was either tighter fitting or if there was some way to cinch it closer down towards the bottom, I think I would like it even more. But even then, for the price and for the materials that you're getting in this, I think it's a pretty interesting jacket. So it's something to take a look at. It's available in a ton of different colors too. So it's a nice cheap option for you. You're getting a really good bang for your buck with that one. All right, so now let's move on now to the pants. Now with the pants, there's a couple ways that I can generally go. I can either go with like a warmer tight or I could go with like a track pant and then put like running tights underneath them, right? So that's a couple of ways to do it. So first let's go over some of the winter running like tights that I've been looking at lately. Um, this is a pair from Tracksmith that I picked up that I wore them in the video for today. The material, super soft, very nice to the touch, both on the inside, touching it with my hands and also when it's on my legs, feels really nice. I like the length of these. I think they have plenty of length. Zippers on the ankles so that you can get in and out of them really easily as well. Uh, and overall, just a really nice pair of running pant tights. Here's a couple of things that I will say about them though. They are very tight, so uh, they don't leave a lot of room to the imagination. And there's only one pocket. It's got one big back pocket. It is big enough to fit my iPhone 11 Pro with its case in there on it, but that's the only pocket that you're getting with these pants. Now, I wore these in 20, mid 20 degree temperatures, and I did feel like if it were windy, I probably would not have had enough protection in the groin area to keep me warm. But for the most part, uh, I was fine with it being able to run with these pants in some cold temperatures. Now, the next pair of tights that I'll look at is a pair of tights that I got from Arcteryx. And on the side, they've got like this uh, zipper pocket right on the thigh and the Arcteryx logo down here. The one thing that I will note about these is that they are much thinner than they appear in the photograph. So I was really surprised about these and I really wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to wear these in cold temperatures. I was actually quite concerned about how thin they were. I was about to send them back, but I thought I'd just put them on, go for a run and test them out. And uh, I wore these just as like my outer pants layer as tights, although I think the website lists them as a base layer. But I just think that if they were really meant to be as like an under layer, they wouldn't have this like 
thigh zipper pocket. So I did wear them as like regular pants. I hope they, that's not too weird, but they seem to work for me as just like the running pants kind of tights. Uh, and I wore them again in temperatures that were below freezing and these worked out really well for me. I thought that they were very comfortable. They were a little bit looser in the thigh area that they thought they would be for like tights. I could use another pocket on this one as well. I think that the thigh pocket is a little bit unusual to have just the one like in the middle of the thigh from like a weight perspective. Oh, and they don't have uh, any drawstring on it. So like the pant, it, it's you get what you get. And if you need it tighter, you're just gonna have to deal with that. So that was like a kind of a weird oversight maybe that you can't tighten these pants up at all. But overall, I do enjoy them. And I was quite surprised at how warm they were for how thin they are. The next pair of pants that I'll take a look at is another pair of pants from Janji. This is part of their Cold Pack Swift Tech collection uh really soft pants i talked about i made a video about the janji collection earlier this year and uh i've been enjoying these pants not only in the fall but now that we're in winter still enjoying them as well again it seems to be like a lot of the new stuff that i'm testing always feels like it's not going to be warm enough but so far i know it's early in the winter it's still just november but even in below freezing temperatures temps down into the mid 20s which we've had a surprising number of those days here already the pants are holding up really well. The one thing that I will say that I did say when I first reviewed the pants is that the pants seem to be a bit short. So you're definitely want to have your crew socks or your over the calf socks when you're wearing these pants. And they do have that back pocket that's big enough to hold an iPhone with a case in it. But these pants are a little bit of like a lighter material. And so like when you do get some weight in there, it becomes noticeable and a little bit uncomfortable. So just something to keep in mind. Otherwise, the pants, I've been really enjoying this pair of pants. Very surprised that they're also still able to hold up even in these winter temperatures. All right, two more pairs of pants. Uh, one is gonna be another one from Kraft that I just absolutely love. It's not new, I've had them for a little while now, uh, and I'm not sure how available they're gonna be. They're from their Sub Z collection, which is like their coldest running gear. And these are, for me, what I think are like the perfect kind of like balance between like winter running pant and like tights. And I think that they like just get the level of snugness that I'm looking for in the winter perfectly. The material is a lot thicker. So a thicker material makes me feel very confident in how warm they are. And they've got that padding stuff, the same that they have on the jacket, but they have it on the thigh and over the knee, which I really like because that's an area that gets really susceptible to cold, especially when it's windy um, in the winter time. So, putting extra protection right where you need it. The one critique that I have about these pants is this seam at the bottom, at the end of this kind of like puffy padded part, uh, tends to rub against the bottom of my knee when I'm trying to do speed work in the winter time. Now granted, it's the winter, I'm not gonna be doing a ton of speed work, but um, I do feel it there and sometimes it gets a little bit uncomfortable. But below that spot, you do have a zipper to help you get in and out of the pants really well and on the inside you could feel that it's like a fleece type of material so definitely built for extreme temperatures and warmth a downside is there's only one pocket on the back it will fit a phone in there but it's just still not enough pockets for a pant of this type especially because i love the pants so much i just want to wear them all day as well and for all day use i need to have like more than this one like little pocket in the back. So that's another like little drawback about these pants. But otherwise, I love them. I could live in these pants. Um, I probably should have bought another pair of them while I had the chance. I'm not sure what the inventory is left like on it. But if you see another pair of pants from Kraft that are like this and have this material in it, pick them up. This material and the way that they use it in their clothes is just absolutely spectacular. I love it. All right, last pair of pants is a new pair that I picked up from Under Armour. Under Armour makes really great cold weather apparel. And this one is definitely built for like the coldest of temperatures. It's got its own version of that like kind of like winter jacket on your pants kind of uh, idea going on. But this one takes it another step further and it puts it like kind of like if there were sh if you were wearing shorts on top of your winter running pants that's like the coverage that you're getting for this like extra extra warm material which i think is really nice because when it's super cold outside that again is where like 
the wind cutting through your pants really affects you in the groin area and that's where it just starts to get really uncomfortable. And so having that extra layer of warmth, I think that I can appreciate that. The rest of the pant is like a warm, stretchy fleece material. There's a couple of reflective elements on the backside, like behind the knee, which I think are nice little touches. And this pair of pants is also very comfortable, but baggy. So it's not the tightest fitting pair of pants, which might be a plus for you. I think of it as a little bit of a minus, but also because it is a little bit baggier, it's something that makes it a little bit easier to wear. Not that I'm going out and about, but assuming at some point in the winter I will be able to go somewhere after our run, for example, then this is a pair of pants that I can definitely wear kind of anywhere and not have to worry about being modest or I guess immodest in my winter running tights. So uh, a lot of versatility with these pants and they're just super, super comfortable. I think that for most people's winters, these pants might be too hot. But if you're somewhere where it gets really cold, these are a pair of pants that you should be definitely looking at because they are super warm and I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of these. Plus, the thing I like about it is there is an Under Armour logo in here somewhere, but it's really like uh, hard to see. It's just this right here, black on black, my favorite kind of logos. So I just think that that's really nice too. So minimal branding, super comfortable, very functional for the winter and all day wearable. So a really great pair of pants. So, oh. I forgot one last thing. Another thing that I like to do when it gets super, super cold is uh, I put a vest on top. And so uh, here's one that I was running in last year. I think it's still available now. Uh, it's from TCA. TCA, a black on black logo, which are really nice. And this one's actually starting to fall off through some of the washes. These pockets have fleece on the inside and it's super warm. So when you got cold hands, put your hands in these pockets. It's really nice and comfortable to wear that way, uh, but it's also really functional to run in. It's a little bit on the baggy side, so this is another piece that you might want to size down in. For me, when it gets super cold, my belly gets really affected when there's a lot of cold winter winds, and so having that vest gives that extra layer of protection that I need in the most vulnerable areas. So I think that's it. That's all of my winter running essentials. If you have any other questions about any of this stuff or how you can use some of the stuff that you already have, feel free to put them in the comments down below. Or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do every day on YouTube, 3 p.m. Central Time. You can always ask me any winter running questions there. That's all I have for today for everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe and warm out there on your runs, and I'll see you on the next one. Yo, what's going on?